Hello, my name is James Paul Bailey. And I'm Cliff Bailey. We're here today to introduce one of the funniest, most caring, dedicated, spiritual, and talented individuals that we know. From winning the Womanless Beauty Pageant two years in a row to helping an elderly man in our community plant a watermelon peel, our brother has the ability to put a smile on any man's face. This young man has a great love for the Lord and is very dedicated to his ministry and what he believes. And if any of you want, have met him this year, you know that he has some mean banjo playing skills. A must for any respectable young man in the state of Alabama. Without any further ado, our brother and your 2012-2013 National Southern Region Vice President, Wiley, Wiley Bailey. My name is Wiley Bailey, and I am from Alabama. Now, you're probably thinking two things right now. You're either thinking, one, he plays a banjo, or two, he's going to marry his cousin. <laughs> well, <laughs> road tide. I could marry, I could, hey, I do play the banjo. I could marry my cousin, but then I think, eh, better not. <laughs> I am a banjo player. I remember one of the first banjo lessons I ever had. I walked in, and the... The fellow looked at me and he said, uh, Wiley, we're going to learn to play the dueling banjos. He said, it kind of goes like this. I looked at him, I said, man, that's awesome. Well, since I was a little boy, it's probably more like this. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> and he said something pretty neat. He said, Wiley, as long as you play the song exactly the way the author of that song wrote it, you're going to sound awesome too. He said, see, in life, you'll, you'll get to where you can play the banjo pretty good, and then all of a sudden, you'll begin to think that you're better than the author, and you'll play it your own way and your own style, but the truth is, the best way to play a song is the way the author wrote it. Now, my banjo teacher, he was a good fella, and a lot of times, whether he knew this or not, he was teaching me about life. And see, that day, I think he was talking more than just about playing the banjo. I think he was talking about the path of life. I can still remember him saying, Wiley, if you ever get off track, just stop and find your way back. And the truth is, in our lives, whenever we get off track, we just need to stop and find our way back to the way the author of life intended us to, to live. I heard a story one time about this young fella who grew up in a good home. I'm telling you, he had everything he ever wanted. And then one day he just said, man, I'm tired of this. I want to go live life on my own. I want to leave. So he went up to his daddy and said, I'm out of here. His daddy loved him so much that he said, I'm going to give you all of your inheritance. And uh, just be careful, son. Well, he left. And at first it was awesome. I mean, he was going to parties and, and living it up. But, but slowly, surely, but slowly, slowly, but surely. He began to run out of money and his decisions that he was making started leading him down a path that he knew he didn't need to be on. It actually got so bad that he had to get a job with a farmer feeding hogs. And then one day he got so hungry that he looked around, he's feeding them hogs and he bowed down and he ate the same food the hogs were eating. Now in that moment, he realized that he could not stay right there. He knew that the only place he needed to be was back at his father's house. So he got up and went back and man, he was scared and nervous. He didn't know if his father was gonna accept him or be mad at him or what, but something remarkable happened when he got home. His father welcomed him in and forgave him for all that he had done. And the truth is in our lives, when we get on that good path and we start going, uh, we'll be tempted to get off track. And if we're not careful, our decisions will lead us down a path of, de of destruction. And the truth is if we ever find our, ourselves in that hog pen, we just need to stop, find our way back to the Father's house, back to the good path, and play our song the way the author of life intended it to sound. And he will welcome us with open arms, forgive us for all we have done, and, uh, and help us out. Now, I love two things, the turtle man and home videos. 
So if you love the turtle man and you love home videos, I want you to give me a yeah. I was actually uh, watching home videos a couple years ago and I ran across this gym. Let's all enjoy. Why well, leave no no? Pink, pink. Spank, spank! Look at that face. I knew exactly what spank, spank meant. I did not want to spank, spank. Look at that. Zoom in a little bit on that face right there. Spank, spank. But what was the harm in getting a little bit closer to the heater? What was the harm in getting that basket? I mean, what was the harm in it? You know, I think it's interesting in life because a lot of times we don't see the harm in things. Um, I've traveled around the country all year and I've run across some funny FFA members, funny high school students. And every now and then I run across a boy who will get to thinking there's no harm in exaggerating the truth. And he'll start out telling a fishing story. He'll say, well, the other day I went out there fishing and I had my rod and I had my reel. Well, shoot, yeah, I did. He said, and I went and cast it. And I started to reel and reel. And all of a sudden I pulled her up and she was at least that big. And the girl beside him, she's like, Aka, excuse me, there is no way the fish was that big. <laughs> and he's like, well, shoot, yeah, it was. You know, <laughs> but what's the harm in exaggerating the truth a little bit, right? Well, I got to where I play that song just near perfect and playing it just the way the author of that song wrote it. And then all of a sudden I decided I could play that song better than the author. I'm going to try to put my own twist on it. And at first I sounded just like him. And then I started putting my own little twist on it. My mama, she's sitting right over there, she'd say, this is my boy, he's the Justin Bieber of the banjo. <laughs> my banjo teacher heard me playing like that one time and he said, son, he said, that don't even sound like the original version. That don't even sound like the original version. The truth is, a lot of times in our lives, we'll get caught up with these little things that we think are harmless. Maybe lying to our parents. Maybe cheating on a test. Making fun of the kid at school that always gets picked on. And before you know it, we start making these little decisions that we think are harmless. You know, I bet if we were to be able to ask that fella that ended up in the hog pen, how in the world did you end up so far away from home? He would say, Wiley, it was a, a gradual thing. See, one decision led to another, things that I didn't think there was any harm in. And before, you, before I knew it, I began to drift further and further away. And then all of a sudden, I, I realized I didn't even know where I was. It reminds me of a story. Uh, one time I was a little boy, my parents decided to take us to the beach. And uh, before we got in the water, my mom, she said, now listen, boys, all you got to do is just stay right there in front of, in front of us, okay, and get out in the water. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So we get out in the water, and, and all of a sudden we, uh, we started drifting a little bit, playing around. And I looked up, and I could still see my parents. So I thought, oh, there's no, nothing wrong. We can still, you know, stay out here and play. So we kept on playing and, and kept on out there. And then all of a sudden I looked back up and to find my parents, and they were nowhere, nowhere to be found. And I got scared, and I, I ran back on the beach, and I got, I got, and I ran towards my mom, and I said, Mama! I said, we were out in the ocean playing, and I looked up, and I couldn't find you, and then James Paul hit me. <laughs> he really didn't say that. I made that part up, actually. <laughs> My mom, she looked at us. She said, boys, you're fine. She said, but the truth is, if you're not paying close attention and being extra careful, you'll get out there in that water, and you'll begin to drift further and further away from your daddy and me. And the truth is, in our lives, if we allow these things that we think are harmless to continue to get in our way, it'll cause us to drift further and further away from the way our song is supposed to be played. Last summer, my dad and my uncle Randall over there decided we were going to grow the biggest garden east of the Mississippi River. And I'm telling you what, we get out there and, uh, and uh, the garden was growing up a little bit and uh, we decided that it was time to plow. Now, we didn't have an up-to-date plow. The only plow we really had was my great-granddaddy's single row uh, pl uh, mule plow that he had, he had left. So we got out there and we hooked our old tractor up to a chain, and hooked that chain up to the single row mule plow. And then me and my brothers were the plow boys. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, he is from Alabama. 
You're daggum right. <laughs> so I remember my dad, he gets on the tractor, he takes off and, and uh, gets going. And, and all, you know, at first I was, I was going pretty good, staying on the road. Then all of a sudden I got distracted. Squirrel. And I get off the road a little bit, get distracted a little bit more and get off the road a little bit. And, and my dad finally, he got off the tractor, he'd come over to me. He said, son, he said, hold on just a second. He said, look at all these vegetables that we've got growing out here. I said, yes, sir. He said, you realize just in a few months that your mom was going to be able to make us vegetable soup, fried okra and squash. Whew. I said, yes, sir. He said, if you keep getting off the road, you're going to ruin all that. And then he said, now look at this irrigation line that you and your brothers worked so hard to put out. He said, uh, you remember how much that stuff costs? Yes, sir. He said, if you get tangled up in that mess, it's going to cost us that much more. And then he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, listen, son, all you got to do is put your hands to the plow and keep your eyes on the row. Put your hands to the plow and keep your eyes on the row. In life, We'll, uh, we'll get out in the, the field and we'll go to work and going pretty good. And all of a sudden, distractions will come and we'll get off the track, off the road. Maybe a group of friends that we know we shouldn't hang out with because they cause us to make bad decisions. Maybe a, a girlfriend or boyfriend that we know that uh, we shouldn't get into certain situations with, but we do. And before we know it, we get off the track a little bit. And see, our Father, our Heavenly Father will come down and He'll say, listen, He'll say, look at all that I've given you. Look at this education that you have. That could lead into a scholarship, a career, a life. Look at this family that loves you. Look at all these blessings that I've given you. Do you realize that if you keep getting off of the row, you're gonna ruin all of that? And you'll say, now let's look at this mess in your life. Look at these friends that you think are so cool. They're just leading you down a path of destruction. This girlfriend or boyfriend that you think you love, your love for them is not measured by how far you could go with them. Rather, by how much you can respect them. And then he'll put her, his hands on us and he'll say, listen, son, all you've got to do is put your hands to the plow and keep your eyes on the row. Put your hands to the plow and keep your eyes on the row. It reminds me, a couple of years ago, I went into a restaurant to eat some breakfast and I walked in there and there's, these, uh, there's this old man sitting by himself he didn't start eating yet. So I walked up to him. I thought, man, that sure is sad. He's out to eat by himself. I said, mister, you reckon it'd be all right if I sit down and eat breakfast with you? He looked up and smiled and he said, yes, yeah, son, that'd be fine. Take a seat. So I sit down and he talked about everything. I mean, he talked about the first time he ever met his wife, the, the jobs that he had growing up, uh, everything. He talked and he talked and he talked. And then finally at the end of the conversation, he looked at me. He got really quiet like old men do and he got my attention. And he said, son, he said, in life, there are a lot of talkers and there ain't many walkers. He looked at me and he, he teared up and he said, son, just be a walker. Just be a walker. You know, I never, I never finished that story about my banjo teacher. He, uh, he and I have a good relationship. We still get together and pick and grin every now and then. And he, uh, he called me a couple years ago and he said, well, he said, you want to come over to the house? We want to have a picking and a grin. And I said, well, shoot, yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. So I come over to his house. I get out of, his, out of my truck and I walk up and he looked at me and he went, which in Alabama, if y'all don't know what it means, get your banjo out. So I got my banjo out. I walked up to him and he went, he kind of smirked at me and went, <laughs> Hold the front door. In Alabama, that's about as bad as talking about your mama. Homie, don't play that. So I looked at him and I went. And he looked at me and said. And I went. He said, whoa, 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 stop. I thought you were done with that mess. I said, oh, I am. He kept on playing. <laughs> I kept on playing. And right there, I think back to that moment. And I think back to him. And uh, 
and all the lessons that he taught me over there, not just with the banjo, but about life. I think about all the lessons that my dad and my uncle have taught me in the fields working back home. I think about all these lessons I've learned tonight. And I think about all of us that are in this room right now. And the truth is, I don't know where you are. You may be in the field, you may be working hard and doing well and living on the straight and narrow. And I, I hope and pray that you are every day. But the truth is, most of us, everybody in this room, probably very often gets tempted to get off the road. The truth is, and I, I know what you guys go through. I've seen it all year. I understand the temptations that you, you face. I understand all the things that you see at school and that you watch on TV. I understand all these things, all this music, everything that, that pressures on you, I understand. But I also understand another thing, and that is that we cannot live our lives in the hog pen of this world. If we're not careful, see, we'll begin to drift further and further away from the right path that's already been established. And when we find that we've got off the path, what we need to do, guys, is just stop. Find our way back to that good path. Put our hands to that plow and keep our eyes on the road. And the last thing that I'll leave you with is the words of that little old man. And that is that in life, he said, there's a lot of talkers. In this arena right now, there's probably a lot of talkers and there ain't many walkers in life. Guys, we must be a walker. And if we are, if we do, if we stay faithful to that, we will play our song exactly the way the author of this life intended us to sound. It sounds pretty good. that you are the most southern hipster mountain man we have ever known and loved. And if a joyful heart is good medicine, you have kept us well all year with your humor and your priceless facial expressions. <laughs> your home will always be in Alabama, but your love and passion for people is contagious. Thank you for being loyal, determined, convicted, and for always living by faith. Learn, grow, serve. Clay, Kaylee, Lindsay, Brennan, and Jonelle. Ladies and gentlemen, your National Southern Region Vice President, Wally Bailey. Yeah. 